Hey everyone, it's Ashley. Welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to be showing you how I like to create some really beautiful and colorful watercolor wash backgrounds like the one that you see here. I love making these backgrounds for cards. It's also really easy just to make a lot of these backgrounds and keep them on hand for when you need them. It's really fun to make them as well and I'm using two different types of watercolors today. So one that I'll be using are these Pink Fresh liquid watercolors and then I'll also be using the Altenew watercolor pan set. You can see it's a little messy but I really like to keep these watercolors dried on the pan so that I can go back in and reactivate them. And I'm going to be using some products from The Greetery today. They're a fairly new company, which I'm pretty obsessed with at the moment, so I'll be using a few of their products finally in my cards today. I'm also using this Pink Fresh My Favorite Things to Say sentiment set, and if you ever just needed to buy one sentiment set for your entire life, this would be the one. It's got lots of different fonts and larger and smaller sayings than funny sayings and sayings that you can use for birthdays and uh, grievance cards, and I just really love that set. So I'll also be using two different types of watercolor paper today. We've got the Distress watercolor paper on the left and then Arches Cold Press on the right. You can see the main difference that you can see on camera here is the color, but also the quality of the paper is a bit different in that the Arches is a little stronger hold, uh, but the Distress watercolor paper does have a nice bright white color and it's got a very rough side and then a very smooth side. So it's nice to use uh, when you are looking to stamp something, obviously the smoother side is much easier for that. I've pulled out my Make Art Station and this is by Ranger and Wendy Vecchi. It's a great lightweight metal surface that is magnetic and it comes with some magnets and a magnetic ruler. I will link the full a review of this make art station here in the top right hand corner of this video but my favorite way to use this currently is as a surface to tape my watercolor cardstock on and this just gives me a nice solid surface that I can tape it onto like you've seen here in the perimeter and this just makes sure that it stays nice and flat when I'm watercoloring and don't get as much warping. So my first uh, watercolors I'm going to be using are the watercolor, the Altenew watercolor pans. And you can see I'm just mixing some colors here. I'm adding quite a bit of water because I want these to be very light. And I do apologize, but right above that yellow on the mixing uh, part of the palette here, I've got a blue color that is just slightly off frame or actually completely off frame. So you can't see the blue, but right above that yellow is the blue color and you'll be able to see that in just a moment. To make sure that I get a really nice, even blend and almost a seamless blend between these colors, I'm completely saturating my cardstock. Now, this watercolor cardstock that I'm using right now is the Distress watercolor cardstock, and I'm using the rough side. I'm not doing any stamping, and I know that I won't be doing any stamping onto this watercolor cardstock panel uh, directly, so I don't have to worry about needing a smooth surface and I like the way that this side really soaks in the water and makes sure that I can put a lot of water on it so I get a really great wet on wet look and that basically just means that I have a wet surface on the cardstock by adding water clean water to it first and then I add my watercolor that I've added water to obviously right on top of that. My biggest concern this entire time is that I'm not making mud with these colors. I don't want to create a brown color that's not going to be bright and vibrant. So I want to make sure that I keep the colors far enough away from each other, but that I can add water in between the colors just to make sure that they get a nice blend. And that's how I get that blend right here without getting any brown colors. I add the yellow, the blue, and the pink far enough away from each other that the colors and the saturation don't mix together. But when I add water, just clean water in between those colors, they sort of just run together and create a really seamless look. For my next 
uh, watercolor wash, I'm going to be using the liquid watercolors from Pink Fresh, and this first color here is Sky Blue. This is going to be a really nice light blue on my panel. However, these liquid watercolors are much more saturated than a watercolor pan. So you don't need very much, and if you want a very light color, you're going to need to dilute it quite a bit. This yellow color is Sunshine, and then I add a pink in right after this that is Bubblegum. All of these products will be linked in the description as well, and you'll be able to see in just a minute, I make quite a mistake, or I make a quite a large mistake um, in just a minute, but I want to show you how I remedy that. So I'm going to keep this all in real time just so that you can see that this technique, especially in watercolor washing, there's really no mistake that can be made because it's all going to be an individual look at the end of the day. So I'm going to saturate this watercolor panel again, this watercolor cardstock panel with clean water. Now this is the Arches cold press watercolor cardstock or watercolor paper. So it's going to take a lot more water to saturate the actual cardstock. It can hold a lot more. It's a lot heavier at 140 pounds. And you just want to make sure that you get a complete saturation of the water in this watercolor cardstock before you go into a wet on wet technique. Now I've gone ahead and put some pink down in that right, the bottom right hand corner and you can see it's still extremely vibrant. There's no muting there at all. So I went ahead and added even more water to my colors just to make sure that I was getting a nice pastel. And this panel actually ends up being quite a bit brighter than my first one. And right there you could see my mistake. Now I just dropped in a lot of yellow and that yellow is extremely bright and vibrant. So it completely took over my entire panel. Instead of just starting over and throwing this one out, I decided to add some pink in between the yellow and the pink and just make it into an orange color. Now I was lucky enough that these two colors that were next to each other actually mixed to make a new color rather than to make a muddy brown. Uh, but that's the beauty of watercolor washes that you can always sort of just make it your own. And I really love that about making these because they're fun. You don't have to think too much about it. So here are the two panels side by side. Obviously the one on the left is a bit lighter, we have a bit more of a pastel look, but definitely both of these would be great to keep on hand as a background or even something to die cut out of, uh, to use die cut pieces on your cards. And I think that these are just really fun to make. They're easy to make if you ever have any downtime, and then you can just keep these panels in your stash. Now I'm going to go ahead and show you the images that come in this Fleur impression set from the Greetery. I'm just going to go ahead and stamp all the layers and I'm going to put a little bit of music on just so you can see all of the layers that I used. I don't have the dies uh, for this set though I wish that I had bought them but I think they were sold out when I went ahead and tried to buy them but I did have to fussy cut all of these images out and it actually wasn't that big of a problem and sometimes I do have problems with fussy cutting uh, but I actually was okay this time so I'm gonna go ahead and stamp all of the images here with all of the layers and I will see you again in just a minute
these are all of the images that stamp out um, from the Fleur impression set from the Greetery. I love the way that this card turned out. Obviously you saw it in the beginning of the video, but the watercolor wash background really makes this card. I'm somebody that uses white backgrounds most of the time in my card making, but I really love the splash of color that this gives without taking too much attention away from the main image. All of the Supplies and products that I used are linked in the description as well as links to my Instagram and website. I hope that you've enjoyed the video and gotten some ideas on how you can use watercolor wash panels in your card making. Thank you so much for stopping by and I'll see you again very soon. Bye.